Welcome back to War Memorial Stadium in Laramie, Wyoming. Utah State has won the toss. They will defer to the second half. And Utah State head coach Blake Anderson coming off an incredible season. The first Mountain West Conference championship for the Aggies finished the season in the top 25. Things have been a little rockier this season, but it seems like they've gotten more in the flow the last couple of games, winning back-to-back -back games for the first time this season. And Craig Bull seemingly always getting it done in Laramie here, the 2016 Conference Coach of the Year, of course, coming over from North Dakota State where he won three national championships. And for a while, they thought this could be somewhat of a rebuilding year after losing 15 players to the transfer portal. But it looks like anything but thus far. Well, the one thing they didn't lose in Laramie is their mentality and their identity. And that's what Coach Bowles' teams are all about. And it feels like they have that intact on homecoming tonight. As far as Utah State goes, I mean, they start the season with one of the best-looking quarterbacks in the Mountain West in Logan Bonner. They love their backup, Cooper Lega. He gets hurt. Levi Williams is there. He's out tonight and just barely available. That's Levi right there, played at Wyoming last year. He's a transfer. So they're all the way down to their fourth guy, and it's just a very different-looking Aggie squad for Coach Blake Anderson. And that is the fourth guy right there, Bishop Davenport, the freshman from... Kilgore Junior College and Spring High School in Texas got his first action last week came in for the final snap of the first half played the entire second half got conference freshman of the week honors leading them to a win over Colorado State as we are set to get things going here with Elliot Nimrod kicking off for Utah State It will be a touchback as we get our first look at this Wyoming offense led by quarterback Andrew Peasley, voted a captain his first year on the team, and of course somebody that this Utah State squad is very familiar with. He was a former Aggie, transferred in this offseason. He'd be starting there right now, given the circumstances with the way things have gone, but he is a good fit for Coach Bowl. Pretty mobile guy, a gritty guy. We'll see what he has to offer after the bye week. This team got pretty tired and pretty beat up, and, and they needed that time off, they told us. As expected, keeping it on the ground with Titus Swen, and he picks up the first down. Hunter Reynolds on the stop for Utah State, and we mentioned in the open how much these guys were going to try to run the ball the offensive line has been blocking very very well this year according to offensive coordinator Tim Pulasic and they're just waiting for these backs to pop off Andrew Peasley running the ball out as well yeah they want Titus Swen to break tackles and that's right what he did there at the point of attack and he finished physically for the first down they, they want more of that from him and I think he's been spectacular 505 yards already but they think there's more in there they're lining up in a traditional eye formation to prove it a give to Swen again trying to cut it back inside he picked up a couple before the stop was made by Kaleo Nevis. As we look at this Utah State defense, the strength of this defense is up front. The linebackers very strong as well. Tefisi and Vapachong have been tackle machines for the Aggies this year. They are without their best defensive end, Byron Vaughns, who went down last week against Colorado State, and he's not available. Patrick Joyner starting. Beasley to throw on second and eight. Going to be short of the first down as he throws to Swen. Pick up a six yards. Pretty much what you'd expect as a start from Wyoming. Heavy dose of Swen running the ball. A nice easy throw for the captain, Andrew Peasley. Get the ball out to Swen. Just ten catches on the year coming in for Titus Swen. So that's 11 now, setting up third and three. Joey Brosh checking in at running back. And the 
This is Peasley keeping it himself. Looking like he picked up the first down. On the stop is Von Pachon. This just shows you Peasley's a pretty big guy, and his feet kind of stop, but he's 6'2", 210, and he can get behind his pads. There's Von Pachon hanging on for the ride. And a good hit from Xavion Steele to end the play, but not before Peasley gets that first down and another set for the Cowboys. One of the things the Cowboys coaching staff is asking Peasley to do is be, quote, more gritty on third down. And that was looked, pretty gritty. Looked like he was gritty there. Absolutely. Peasley going to the air, unable to hold on. He was looking for Joshua Cobbs, his leading receiver. And Wyoming very conservative with this. They leave both backs in and the I formation to give Peasley plenty of protection. You're going to see both backs come out to the right and block on the edge. And they just wanted that one on one matchup. And it looked like a catchable ball, but good fight and steal to make this second and 10. Single back is Sweat. Swen gets two, maybe three. And that's going to set up third and about seven. Yeah, they just lined up with three tight ends, and they have a, a big attitude starting this game with just the kind of personnel groupings they're put out there. We talked to Ephraim Bonda, the defensive coordinator of the Aggies, and he said, we'll know right away if they are going to try to run us over like they did last season with the way they line up and, and line it up with those three tight ends. And now a third and seven. We'll see if they can stay on the field. Beasley pressured. Pump fake, and he is wrapped up for the sack. That's Vong Pachong. He's really become a leader, slowly but surely become more and more aggressive. Peasley's got plenty of time here. They send the backs out, but once his back foot hits the ground, he has to start moving around. It looked like he was going to squirt out of there for a second, but nice hands by A.J. Vongpachon. Clayton Stewart on to punt for the Cowboys. From about the 38-yard line is where he kicked it, and Cooper Jones makes the fair catch on the 15. Our first look at Calvin Tyler Jr. and the Utah State offense right around the corner. Fox College football is sponsored by Chase Sapphire. Make more of what's Yours. What a wild ride it has been at the quarterback position. Logan Bonner, one of the best in the conference, started the first four games, had a broken foot. Cooper Lega filled in and then got a concussion in the first quarter against Colorado State. Levi Williams comes in. He hurts his ankle in the first half. And then he is replaced by Bishop Davenport, who started the year as the four-string quarterback. First offensive play of the game, first pass of the game from Davenport out to Terrell Vaughn. We saw Logan Bonner there on the sideline. Still supporting his team and the young quarterback. Nice easy throw for Bishop Davenport to get started. And look at that stat. The whole room, the whole quarterback room has played this year. And there's Tyler picking up the first down, a five-yard gain for the second leader, second leading rusher in the conference coming in. Devon Harris on the stop from his defensive end position for the Cowboys. This is a rhythm offense, so they catch a rhythm and they play fast, and they feel like they could play fast with Davenport despite his youth. Robert Briggs trying to turn the corner. And he makes something out of nothing. Wyatt Eckler coming in from his safety spot to make the tackle for Wyoming. He's been productive. Uh, Right around 50 carries so far on the year for Briggs and future of the program at the running back position, they really feel like. Second and 12, quick pass out to Cobbs. The Maryland transfer. He's done some nice things 
Davenport. State this year. Yeah, he has. Uh, he's been very, very good. Most productive receiver. And Davenport right now looks pretty calm, Dan. I mean, he's come into this game with a purpose, and we don't see any early nerves on this drive. Third and six. Davenport to throw again. And overshoots Terrell Vaughn. And the freshman can't get it done on the money down. Terrell Vaughn only five foot seven. Good idea. Davenport looking at the tight end first and stirs her. And then he goes out to his second receiver in Vaughn. And the right idea. And he was open, but just a little too far out of reach for the diminutive Vaughn. Dotson Lee on to punt for the Aggies. Fair catch called for by Wyatt Whelan. A 56-yard punt, Titus Swin, and the Cowboy offense getting another shot coming up. This is Bridger's battle here in Laramie. Whenever Wyoming plays Utah State, they play for Bridger's rifle. That's not Jim Bridger right there, though. That's Hugh Glass being eaten by a bear. And Jim Bridger left him for dead. That's the story of the Renovant, as you know. There's the rifle that's given away. Look at it right there. It's got the beautiful case. What a trophy. Mountain Hawking rifle. Only the Fremont Cannon is more intimidating in the Mountain West. Here's Swen right up the middle, and he is swallowed up. MJ Tafisi. 25 tackles in the last two games combined for MJ Tafisi. Between AJ Vonpachan and MJ Tafisi, it's about 130 tackles <laughs> halfway through the season. Just wildly productive linebackers making a lot of plays. Here's Swen again with some room, puts his head down. That sets up third and five. You talked about them waiting for Titus Swen to kind of break out. His numbers haven't matched the expectations after they lost Xavier Valade to Arizona State. Swen was expected to step up into a role where he would produce like he did last year. So far, 4.4 yards per carry. Hasn't been bad, but they're used to they're used to their halfbacks getting over five yards per carry. They like the run lanes they've created. They expect them to break more tackles. That time, Vonkbachan stopped his journey about five yards downfield. Peasley. Off the mark to Wheeland. And that's going to bring up another Wyoming punt. They definitely have a plan with Bishop Davenport, and he's able to move them pretty quickly after successful plays. It's impressive. Calvin Tyler wrapped up right away by Devon Harris. And that brings up fourth down. Devon Harris, I mean, they get that momentum, they play fast. And then all of a sudden you're facing a fourth down and one. Nice play by Harris to get to the legs of Tyler. Just coming off the backside, unblocked. And Tyler kind of throttled down around the line of scrimmage, and that allowed Harris to get to him. And wow, a quick start, but a quick punt. Cotson Lee punting again. And it goes into the end zone for the touchback. We'll get another look at this Wyoming offense tomorrow on Fox, the NFL doubleheader, starting with Aaron Rodgers and the Packers taking on the Commanders or other regional action. Then in America's Game of the Week, one of the biggest matchups of the year, it's Mahomes and the Chiefs taking on the 49ers. Christian McCaffrey, now a member of the San Francisco 49ers. Check for the games in your area, only on Fox and the Fox Sports app. McCaffrey back in the Bay. He's going to find out that there's a lot of San Francisco 49er fans in that area. Not as many Stanford fans. <laughs> I think you are correct, sir. Two-game win streak for the Cardinal, though. Flags flying everywhere. Dwayne McNeely in it running back for the Cowboys. Illegal snap, number 77 offense. Five-yard penalty, remain first down. 
Cal McNeil, our referee tonight. Thank you, Cal. That's Nofo Afia Tulafono, the center. And they just cannot afford that kind of thing. It is imperative that this offense, which is not a real air show right now. Oh, Peasley stumbles. Still gets it downfield and has a man. Colin O'Brien on the catch for Wyoming. Just his second catch of the year. How about this? Just when I say they're not an air show, they put on a show. Peasley stumbles but gets his feet. Thought he was going to throw it to Parker Christensen short, but he pops the ball downfield to the Mission Viejo, California Diablo. Saddleback Junior College transfer. Colin O'Brien, the junior, with a big catch, and now Wyoming's in business. 46-yard gain. Swen picks up one, maybe two, before... He's wrapped up by. That's Hale Motu Apuaka. And you know, that's a very interesting thing. We talked about Swen's strength. And Hale Motu Apuaka had him right at the line of scrimmage. I mean, that should have been uh, second and 11 right now. But he's able just to push and use those legs and just get something out of it. That's impressive to me. Motu Apuaka, a very powerful 280 pounds. Yeah. Swen breaking a couple of tackles here as he's out to the 30-yard line. Seven-yard gain for Titus Swen. Daniel Grezik ends up making the play at the end of that one. But let's watch Swen work with his feet. This is the kind of game this is going to be. Colin O'Brien comes across with a nice block on the interior, and he breaks the tackle of Ampajan. Play some bowling. Past the contact zone. First third down of the drive, it's third and one. Swen with room. Titus Swen inside the 10. Touchdown, Cowboys. A 30-yard touchdown run for Titus Swen. He got a great block from his fullback, Caleb Driscoll, who just hammered into the line of scrimmage and just blows out a whole path. And Swen is able just to not even have to cut six or seven yards down the field, breaks a tackle, and finishes an impressive drive, really fueled by the long pass from Peasley to Colin O'Brien. But love that block from the sophomore out of Gillette, Wyoming. Thunder Basin High School day. Let's go Bolts. And Hoyland makes it 7 to nothing with the extra point. Titus Swen doing what they've been waiting for, breaking off a big run, 7 nothing Cowboys. The Pokes up in Laramie. This is the bludgeoning type of football that Coach Bull wants. You're going to see the very nice pull from Jack Walsh and then the seal and the very physical attack from the fullback, Caleb Driscoll. And Titus Swen knows what to do with that. Cannot be tackled with the slap to the ankle. And Wyoming showing the kind of aggression they wanted to show in the first quarter, starting to wear down that Aggies front a little bit. Well, it's really exactly what Blake Anderson and his Utah State staff were hoping wouldn't happen. They pound you, they pound you, they hit a shot play, and then they pound you some more. A shot play was a bit of an adventure, you know. Peasley stumbled, but he was able to collect himself, and that gave him some confidence. And that's going to be a touchback. Well, indeed, ha had he fallen down, because it's college football, obviously, he would have been down, not able to hop back up and throw that ball. So. An athletic play from Peasley to keep his feet and then complete that pass all the way down to Colin O'Brien, who makes just his second catch of the year to set up the Titus Wynn touchdown. So we get another look at Davenport, the freshman from Spring High School in Texas, who they really liked, felt like he was under-recruited, but certainly did not plan on him playing at this point in the season. Keeping it on the ground, here is Davenport. And he picks up eight. Don't be surprised if you see that a whole lot more from this Aggie offense with him. Yeah, he didn't attack Isaac White or try to knock him over. Just wisely gets out of bounds, tries to get the next play. And we'll see if he can get this thing started. And the 
tripped up in the backfield this time. Coming in to make the play is Isaac White. Yeah, he wasn't going to let it happen two times in a row. He saw the development this time, and Isaac White just comes and gets right underneath the block of Josh Sturzer and makes the play. Nice heads-up play by the sophomore out of Pottstown, Pennsylvania. Third and five for the Aggies. Davenport. Complete. And the Aggies are going to pick up the first down. Forward progress for Brian Cobbs. Very calm delivery by Bishop Davenport. I thought he was going to take off there, but he waited for Cobbs' route to develop and delivered an accurate ball. See if that gives him some confidence here. Throw it again. Pressure coming. Davenport able to elude it for the moment. And that brings up second down. And if you're going to be down to your fourth quarterback, I mean, this is what you want that guy to be able to do, right? You want him to be able to buck up the game a little bit, move around, create some things with his legs, and keep that defense chasing. See if that helps him or if they spy him or how much he can scramble throughout this evening. Second and nine from the 36. Davenport. Looking over the middle for Justin McGriff, the big six foot, six inch receiver from Tampa. You're just looking for consistency when it comes to a young quarterback. You kind of get back to your base offense, uh, call things that he's comfortable with. Uh, some of it he looks more comfortable with than others. That was just an errant ball. Big McGriff, six foot six, was pretty open. Third and long for the freshman. Tyler in a running back. Wyoming brings four, pass complete. And first down after Josh Sturzer hauls it in. Love this throw from Davenport. He leads Sturzer, so by the time Sturzer catches the ball, he's moving forward toward the sticks already. That's a big conversion. Two in a row here for the young man as the Aggies offense trying to work on the road in altitude. Davenport, five of seven thus far. First career start for the freshman. Quick throw again. And nowhere to go for Vaughn. He is wrapped up right away. That's Easton Gibbs from his middle linebacker spot. It's been so good, the sophomore from Temecula, California. Yeah, he's had to kind of fill that spot that the great Chad Boma left. I mean, following in that guy's footsteps, one of the best linebackers in the history of this program, if not the best, and Gibbs moves over, and he's been very productive this year, about 60 tackles. And keeping on the ground with Tyler. He picks up a yard. Apologies to Logan Wilson. He was a pretty good linebacker, too, for Wyoming. He was. But they do have a great linebacker tradition here. Both of those guys, Logan Wilson and Chad Muma, third-round draft picks. Wilson by the Bengals back in 19, and Muma last year by the Jacksonville Jaguars. Two for two on third-down conversions on this drive for Utah State. Trying to make it three for three. Davenport looking up the right sideline, almost able to connect with Cobbs, but that was great coverage from Cam Stone right there, step for step with Brian Cobbs. Cam Stone only a five foot ten. He's given up four inches, and like you said, Dan, he's going step for step. A little bit of hand fighting, but it was Cobbs that grabbed him around the neck and then tried to make a one-handed catch that really kind of killed his chances. And the Aggies have to punt. Pokes hold. The Australian, Stephen Consoli back in. And an unfavorable bounce for Utah State as we will have a touchback. I tell you, I have been impressed with Bishop Davenport and his poise thus far. Yeah, they said that about him. He had played in a lot of big games in high school coming out of Texas. A championship quarterback, a guy that was excited about the opportunity to come into the game in Fort Collins last week. A lot of guys would be like a deer in headlights. You know, you go out there not expecting to play. You might not even put your pads in your pants. But he was ready to go, and he looks ready to go tonight. They just have to get a little bit more consistent with their throws and lean on that running back a little bit more. Here's Swen from the 20. 
is stacked up after a gain of two. You know, we've kind of seen as Logan Bonner went down, we sort of saw the identity of this Aggies team change. Their defense stepped up, and they've become a much more defensive-oriented football team, which is what you have to be. That's where you have some veterans, and you lean on those guys when you get beat up as a team. But to go four quarterbacks deep and have the defense playing inspired football like this has been a great thing for Coach Blake Anderson to see. Beasley throwing on second and eight. And they want the flag. Irvin Hall was there in coverage. And Irvin Hall might get there a little bit early on a Wyatt Wheeland, who's running the out route there. And uh, the ball kind of hangs up there. And Gervin, yeah, he bumps him just a skosh early there. Did not draw the flag. And a lot of the time, if a guy's kind of playing the ball and, and going through the receiver, you won't see the flag in that situation. Well, that was certainly the case there. The Miami transfer may have gotten away with one. Oh, very up. early. No doubt about that. That's up third and eight. And we have flags. Partial snap. Delay. Number six. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Remain third down. Well, sometimes when there's a bad call or a call you don't like, there's a little bit of chaos for a moment while everybody's in disbelief and you have trouble getting the play out. Not sure if that happened here with Peasley, but after a bye week, you hate to see that kind of stuff. Joey Brosh in a running back for the Cowboys. Third and 12. Beasley flushed out of the pocket, has an open man, first down Cowboys, and how about that run? Trayton Welsh putting his head down, and the captain picks up a couple more yards. I like Welsh. He had some big catches in the red zone last week, and he's there for his quarterback when things break down. Beasley's got enough time there, and he just kind of floats out to his right. Welch is running with him. Well done finding the tight end. That's been a big weapon for them in play action. Welch leads the team with four touchdown receptions this year. Fresh set of downs. Here's Swen, and I'll tell you what, MJ Tafisi got to him first, and he just laid the wood. We've seen a great battle here between A.J. Von Pachon, MJ Tafisi, and Titus Swin and throw in Caleb Driscoll, the fullback as well. There's going to be a lot of collisions there around the line of scrimmage. 51st tackle for a loss this season, 7 0. Wyoming on top. A physical battle here in Laramie. Fox College football is sponsored by Chase Sapphire. Make more of what's yours. 7-0 here in Laramie's. We are set to start the second quarter. Titus Swen operating out of the I formation here on second and 11. And it was A.J. Von Pachon wrapping him up right away, setting up third down. And yeah, they're trying to go off tackle and knock the edge off with Driscoll and bring Swen under that, but Von Pachon reads it beautifully and slices in there with courage and makes a tough play. Heck of a battle shaping up with these linebackers and Titus Swin, but can the Utah State offense do enough to keep these guys fresh? That's the question. Third and 10. Beasley looking over the middle, left side, up top. What a catch by Wyatt Wheeland. Wheelan's number 11 there, and he's just going to run the out and up. Mike Larson on him, coming over to help Gervin Hall Jr. And just a perfectly delivered ball for Peasley. Peasley throwing again, this time too high for Cobbs. The pass to Wheelan went for 22 yards. Both quarterbacks a little bit inconsistent tonight. You know, we see one good throw, and then the next one, 
is a little bit errant. Cobb 6'4", and that one was too high for him. And that is not where the Cowboys like to play under Craig Bull. They do not like second and ten with the clock stopped. You do not see them throw the ball on first down a whole bunch unless they think they can exploit something. They do like those explosives, though. A 46-yard completion and a 22-yard completion for Peasley thus far. Again, keeping it on the ground. This time it's Brosh. And third down coming up. Chili Brosh kind of backed into the hole that time. Another good lead block by Caleb Driscoll. That time on Patrick Joyner. Big collisions in there in this first half. Two Tough for, football. Two for two on third down so far on this drive. They converted a third and 12 and a third and 10. Looking at third and eight here. Brosh still in the game of running back. Peasley finally delivers it, had a lot of time. And that's going to fall incomplete, bring it up fourth down. Peasley did not like his first reads and then just kind of floated down. Looked like he was going to take off, but then he throttled down and stayed behind the line of scrimmage and tried to deliver a fastball, couldn't get it done. And when we talked to defensive coordinator Efrem Banda, it's exactly what he said they were trying to do. Keep him in the pocket, make him get past that first read. And he was unable to convert on third down there for the Cowboys. Clayton Stewart. This is punt land about five yards deep into the end zone. And when we come back, what a scene here in Laramie. Homecoming, 7-0 Cowboys. The biggest sporting event on the planet returning to Fox Sports. And for the first time ever, it's taking place over the holiday season. The FIFA World Cup starts November 20th on Fox and FS1. A lot going on in November here on Fox. And always a lot going on in Laramie. I mean, look at that cutie. Nice. I mean, the World Cup is a big deal, but it's no Bridgers battle with the rifle for a trophy. That is a valid point. <laughs> what did they call Jim Bridger uh, when he was older? Old Gabe. Old, really? Old Gabe. Illiterate his whole life. Yeah. Still famous. Well, so was Dexter Manley. Did it. Bishop Davenport. Incomplete to Brian Cobbs. And Davenport now 6 of 10 after that fast start. Yeah, he had uh, plenty of time there and was able to step into that throw and, and delivered it pretty well. Enough time to let this in route by Brian Cobbs develop. Steps up a little bit and right on both hands of Cobbs. Hawkins was right on him. Yeah, good coverage by Ja'Cory Hawkins. Here's Tyler. And not a whole lot going there. Wrapped up by Caleb Robinson. Caleb Robinson, sophomore out of Omaha, Nebraska. Coach Bowl, some big roots in Nebraska, and former Nebraska football assistant. Back when they ran the Veer, and the world was right. <laughs> Long time ago. Third and eight, Davenport to pass. Wyoming bringing the pressure, and they get him. That was Devon Harris, 19 sacks coming into this game, first in the Mountain West Conference, and they get to the freshman here. He's been really steady. He's just going to attack Alfred Edwards on the edge, and he uses his hands and knocks down Edwards' hands with the cross chop and then gets to the legs of the freshman quarterback. He's been playing well throughout the night. Just a sophomore, Devon Harris. Second three and out for Utah State. And that was Whelan calling for the fair catch as he is falling down. Not an easy place to play here in Laramie, War Memorial Stadium. 7,220 feet above sea level. Mount West has a lot of stadiums that are in high elevation, five of the six. Highest stadium elevations in FBS or in the Mountain West Conference, makes sense. Yeah, the Aggies aren't too worried about it uh, as far as what's going on in Laramie tonight. 
Uh, they know what it's like in Maverick Stadium. I mean, 3,000 feet, how much of a difference is that on your lungs? I, I don't know. Uh, I think it can make a little difference. <laughs> That's Titus Swen again and Motu Akapaka on the stop. That brings up second ten. Look, Craig Bull. This fancy vest on. It's a beautiful vest. Some guys just fit in certain places. And I don't think that's any more solid than here in Laramie with Coach Bull. It just feels like they're right for each other. Here's Peasley on the play action. And he completes that one to his tight end, Jackson Marcotte. And third down is approaching after the four-yard pickup. They've done a good job so far in the first half. I know the numbers aren't astronomical, but they've established Titus Swen as a threat. They've established their fullback and their physicality at the line of scrimmage. So now, Peasley can work a little bit of the play action and get these tight ends involved. We've seen Colin O'Brien with a big catch. Marcotte that time. Trey Welch has been involved as they get their offensive weapons more and more sharpened as the game goes on. But it all is predicated on establishing the run. Peasley has completed passes to five different receivers. Here, Swent has some room, picks up the first down. And he is run out of bounds by Hunter Reynolds. 11-yard gain for Swent. Hunter, Hunter Reynolds has to fly over the top here and kind of try to scrape to get Swent. And I mean, no one else touches him. You see the collapse there on the right side, beautifully done by Frank Crum and Jack Walsh. And Swent gets in behind him and doesn't have to do much until he's way into the second level. 79 yards on the ground for Wyoming, 74 of those coming from Titus Swen. He's getting a little breather with DQ James checking in. And here is James. James has some room, spins out of a tackle, and picks up the first down for the Cowboys. Stuff along the sideline. Everybody loves MC Fresh Legs. And that is the young back that comes in, and his legs are fresh, and he's ready to go. That's DQ James right here. They get him on the flip play, and Utah has it pretty well defended out to the edge, but he finds a hole and just explodes through it. Zach Watts leading through with a good block. Young man out of Texas making some waves early in this game as Titus Swin went out. MC Freshlegs picks up 16 on his first carry. <laughs> Beasley complete again, and boy, does he like those tight ends. It's Welch one more time down to the 22. And this is a good looking drive for the Cowboys. Really puts your linebackers in peril. You know, everybody's worried about this run game, and you have to be, otherwise, it's going to embarrass you. So, secondarily, you have to start looking for where your tight ends are in your zone after the run fake and just too much time for Peasley to sit back there and relax and deliver the ball. Welch looks good so far. Yeah, Paris, 16-yard catches for Welch, two for 32. Like his hands. Swen, turning the corner again, tiptoeing his way towards another first down before he's upended by Ayan Yan Wu. And I think he actually stepped out of bounds after a five-yard game. Yeah, right after uh, Vonk Pachon hit him. He's going to be one-on-one -on -one with Vonk Pachon as they're playing fast. Talk about physical. Titus Swen puts his head down. There's a Utah State defender. I believe it's Hunter Reynolds who was slow to get up after the 12-yard game. Boy, is he a tough runner. Yeah, they're tired of tackling Titus Swen. Titus Swen with 91 yards with 8-12 to go in the first half. Let's see what happens here. That's Tafisi. And then Reynolds finishing the tackle. Yeah, Reynolds wrestles him down. It's they're very, very productive. Mike Linebacker, who's emerged as a leader, MJ Tafisi, who caught the worst of that between him and Titus Swen. Yeah, Tafisi still down. 
spent four years at Washington, his first year at Utah State, and has been a very valuable addition to this defense. We're back in Laramie after this. And there is MJ Tafisi. Great news as he is able to walk off the field and heads into the tent. Sione Moa replacing Tafisi as it is a first and goal situation for Wyoming. Here Swank cutting it back up inside and in for his second touchdown of the game. Well, that's what Craig Bowl and Tim Polasek and this offense wanted to see. They wanted to see Titus Swin take over physically, and you see that right side. Beautiful blocking from everybody there. A great push. And Swin knows what to do, putting his foot in the ground and just taking it to the goal line, running to score. That is hat on a hat, winning individual battles, creating a crease, and Titus Swen taking advantage. He now has 16 carries for 96 yards and two touchdowns. Wyoming getting it done on homecoming. Welcome back to Laramie. Just a reminder, the State Farm Halftime Show with Mike Hill, Emmanuel Acho, and Chris Peterson is coming up in just a few minutes. And so far, it is all Wyoming wrapping up an eight-play, 67-yard drive with another Titus Swin touchdown run. And on homecoming, you got to dress up. I mean, those two kind of stealing the scene here, but the young lady behind her. Yeah, very strong. That's, that's, you wonder uh, if it's all the same artist. It's kind of scary, and it's a fine artist at that. Maybe the same household or a neighborhood. I mean, it's not a shoddy makeup job. That's legit. For sure. That one through the end zone for a touchback as we get another look. And yeah, it's the attention court. to detail at the bottom there. That's strong. Yeah, it took you a minute to really, notice that. Normally, yeah. you're all over that kind of thing. Well, I'm checking out Harley Quinn behind <laughs> And these guys don't need any makeup. Just a couple of pom-poms. And a lot to be happy about for the Cowboys. Let's see if this defense can keep it going with eight minutes to go here in the first half. They've been fresh enough. And Tyler Davenport wrapped up after a two-yard gain. Wyatt Eckler on the stop. Austin Eckler's brother, the third leading tackler for the Cowboys this season. Yeah, coming off a concussion, Wyatt Eckler. And I thought that was a situation where Tyler needed to get that ball. Davenport should have given that. Davenport quick throw. This time it is complete to Brian Cobbs. And that's a first down for the Aggies. Now they have uh, some mismatches out there size-wise with Brian Cobbs and Justin McGriff. Uh, some good-looking wide receivers. Can Davenport get them the ball consistently? This time it's Tyler. Wrapped up in the backfield, Burton Oli getting him for another TFL. That's going to go in the books as a one-yard loss. Former walk-on, Burton Oli's become a leader on this team. As Tyler just has not been able to establish himself at all throughout. Second and 11, and pressure coming again. Down goes Davenport. Burt Noli's there, and this defense is stepping up huge. And they bring Isaac White again, the safety who's been all around the line of scrimmage, off the edge to make another play. Third very long as Wyoming calls a timeout. Isaac White getting a sack or half a sack there. Burt Noli making his presence felt as well that's going to bring up third and 18 for utah state and so far wyoming has been the more physical team up front on both sides of the ball and that's who they wanted to be coming into this game 
Coach Bowl talked about how during the bye week they accomplished the things they wanted to accomplish. As a head coach, you, you want to rest everybody, but sharpen everybody and kind of re-energize your team. They had a week zero game with no buys, so they felt pretty beat up down in New Mexico last week and able to pull off a victory. There's the defensive coordinator, Coach Jay Sawvel. Enjoyed our chat with Jay Sawvel, as I did all the coaches, third and 18. Let's see what this Utah State offense dials up for Bishop Davenport. Wyoming brings four. Davenport complete to Na Na Davis. And that's going to be a pickup of 10, but brings up fourth down. Yeah, there was a lot of safety help over on the other side with Justin McGriff. And Davenport kind of gave up on that side of the field early, and he just went short on the right side. And that's not enough as Wyoming's going to take the ball and try to run him over again with that run game with those tight ends. Wyatt Whelan is back to receive the Cotson Lee punt. Fair catch called for. And down. Whelan drops the ball. Utah State thinks they have it. And indeed, they do. A huge mistake by Whelan. And that's Jamie Nance recovering the fumble for the Aggies. What a huge play. They like Whelan back there because he's kind of sure handed. And that time, they do a good job of giving him enough room. Looks like Savion Steele right at first was kind of moving around a little close, but a huge play for the Aggies and an opportunity for them to get back in this game when things were looking very dire. Wyatt Whelan gives him a gift. Look at Blake Anderson animated on the sideline. Calvin Taylor in at running back. Talk about field position. Ball's on the 17-yard line for Utah State. Davenport keeps it. And he's not going anywhere. Stacked up by Wyatt Eckler and Omatosho. Yeah, Wyatt Eckler came on the blitz there and kind of got caught in no man's land and then just decided to go with it and got into the backfield and disrupted things. There's Wyatt. Out of Windsor, Colorado. Windsor High School Wizards. Did you look that up this week? I asked Austin about it. <laughs> He's got another Windsor High School Wizard on the team, the left guard, Zach Watts. Plenty of time for Davenport. And he's tripped up behind the line of scrimmage once again. And this Wyoming defense, led by Devon Harris and company, keep on coming. Just a little bit too long moving around. He's got to make a decision and get rid of that ball. I don't think anybody's expecting him to throw in rhythm on every play, but you're absolutely right. Just held on that one a bit too long. Third sack of the game for Wyoming brings up third and 13. And Utah State calls the timeout. And they saw they did not like what was coming. Uh, Anthony Tucker, the offensive coordinator, had an empty backfield there, and Wyoming was about to pin their ears back and get after Bishop Davenport. Here's the previous play. You know, he's back there, he's looking, he, he's worked some progression. There's Burt Noli coming at him. There's Harris coming at him. Burt Noli ends up finishing the play. Gavin Meyer in at the end, and you just can't dance around there too long back, especially when the run with Calvin Tyler has not been established for the Aggies. On the other side of the field, we've seen Peasley have a lot more time because Titus Swen in that run game has been established. And both these coaches kind of knew what kind of game this was going to be coming in. They knew it was going to be physical, and Utah State felt like they were going to have to have a, a muffed punt, you know, something like that to get them back in the game. But can they capitalize here after the tournament?
third and 13 for Bishop Davenport. Pressure coming, has to get rid of it early. First down, Utah State. Calvin Tyler hauls it in, 15-yard gain, and Davenport sees the rush coming, gets rid of it early. That was really interesting. You know, they call a timeout, and then they bring Calvin Tyler out, and they put him in the backfield, and Wyoming thought he was in the backfield to help with protection. Looked like he was, and then all of a sudden, he pops out and makes himself available to the quarterback. Pretty slick call, creates a first and goal. Davenport, back shoulder, looking for Justin McGriff. Makes sense at 6'6", that's where you go. He's got Harrell on him, who's not short. You know, he's six foot two, the transfer from Wisconsin. He does a good job kind of getting his head around, looking back at the ball, avoiding the flag. And McGriff only goes up with one hand. Going to be interesting to see what they do here on second and goal from the five. Just haven't been able to establish a run game at all. Calvin Tyler just five carries for 11 yards. And here's Davenport keeping it on his own. And Utah State in for their first touchdown of the game, courtesy of their freshman quarterback. Big moment for that young man and this team, able to capitalize on the turnover. Good, slick mesh that catches Isaac White off guard. The hole opens up, and Davenport scampers for the touchdown, and that makes things a lot more interesting. Down the stretch here in the second quarter, Wyoming looked like they were about to take the will of the Aggies. Connor Coles up and through, so 14-7. Utah State finally on the board. Bishop Davenport finding the end zone for the Aggies, their first touchdown. Aggies getting back in, and here's the play that really sparked it. That's Sui Aonoa, the linebacker, and watch him. He's got the running back, Calvin Tyler, in coverage, but they expect max protection and he just comes thinking he's going to hit the running back. Tyler slips right by him. A very heads up play by Davenport to make it catchable and convert it into a touchdown for Davenport as you see Coach Anderson talking to his young quarterback, capitalizing off that turnover. Great play design by offensive coordinator Anthony Tucker. Yeah, called a timeout for it, too. Will be a touchback once again. And first downs have been a thing of beauty for Wyoming tonight. Averaging 7.5 yards per play on first down as opposed to less than two for Utah State. And that's really how they operate. That's why I was so surprised in the first quarter when they had an incomplete pass on first down. It's like blasphemy. Uh, they like to run the ball, and especially that right side of the offensive line. Jack Walsh and Frank Crum have been really productive for them in the first half. Flag down. And there was a lot of room there for Titus Swint. You mentioned Jack Walsh, who wears number 79 at his right guard snap. spot. Illegal snap. It's number 77. Five-yard penalty. Remain first down. To Lafono, that's the center call for the penalty. Second one on him. We're talking about Jack Walsh. Got his first career start in the last game against New Mexico. His dad played right tackle at Wyoming, also wore number 79. He's playing great tonight. Not the dad, Jack. Dad is cheering hard. Titus Swin, no gain there, wrapped up by Coleman at the line of scrimmage. Nice recovery there by Coleman and the Aggies defense. That first down play looked like they had the push on the right side that they needed if it wasn't for the illegal snap. But now second and 15, I mean, you look at that kind of yard, it's a great opportunity for the Aggies to get off the field. Caleb Driscoll checking in at running back alongside Peasley, Swen in as well. There's Peasley, he can run, and he does on second and 15. He is 
is about two yards shy of picking up the first. Yeah, Max Alford makes the tackle on him from behind, but good awareness by Peasley. Little pump fake, and then he tucks the ball and protects it. And it's a good job because behind him was Alford. Could have forced a fumble there. Just the third carry of the game for Peasley, who came in as the second leading rusher for Wyoming. See why he's pretty aggressive when he gets out there. Good move, good athlete. Swen. Looks like he picks up the first down before he's wrapped up by Patrick Joyner. And the sticks are on the move. Just so many collisions right in the contact zone. Big Patrick Joyner, 6'3", 245, and Swen coming together there. And Joyner had to come to the sideline. Swen getting the breather, Joey Brosh. Back in, fake to Brosh, Beasley going downfield. No go again, he was looking for Trayton Welsh, already has a couple of catches. And he had some separation. Beasley just missed him in this situation. And now that they've established that run, they like to take their shots down the field to the tight ends, but Max Alford was beat. Throw was far. See the numbers there. Sorry, Petros, for Peasley. 6 of 12 for 109 yards. Comes in averaging about 142, 143 passing yards per game. First down throw by the Pokes. How about that defensive front for Utah? Nothing going. Greshik. There to make sure that they gain no yards. Yeah, they want to get it right there, kind of in the left side. You're going to see Swen bring it back there, and it's Vok Pachon right up under him, and then Greshik behind, forcing a third and long situation. And they were able to kind of get out of their last long yardage situation with a run from Peasley. The incomplete pass on first down sets up another third and long. What do you think they'll do? Probably get it to the tight end or a short pass to Swen. Look at Greshik there, the Nevada transfer who is coming off a career game last week against Colorado State. He had three sacks. Blake Anderson needs his defense to continue to step up on this drive with third and 11 coming up. Been a little thin at defensive line. Has Utah State. They lost two starting defensive tackles. Playing without Byron Vaughns is out with a concussion. Ephraim Bond has had his hands full. A little pump thing from Peasley. Throwing on the run, and that is broken up. Ike Larson, nice play defensively. Peasley was looking for Cobbs. One of those young guys in the secondary for Utah State. They just have not really been able to get it to the wide receiver position in this game. Wheeland with one nice catch down the field, but Peasley working. Cobb's doing a good job of turning and showing his numbers, but just doesn't come back for that ball. And that's what enables Ike Larson to get a hand in there and force this fourth down. Great break on the ball by Larson, who made his first career start last week. Had an interception and a block punt earlier in the year against Alabama. Clayton Stewart's punt. Caught by Cooper Jones. Fair catch as he's falling down at about the 21 yard line. And a muff punt by Wyatt Whelan, recovered by Utah State, and they take advantage. Bishop Davenport in for Utah State's first touchdown of the game and in one that looked like it could be getting away from the Aggies all of a sudden it's a one score game and now with the ball with 134 to go in the half they get another chance to potentially tie things up here can they get that generator started this is a rhythm offense can Davenport find that Robert Briggs on the swing pass and coming in to make the stop is Braden Siders it's going to go in the books as a loss of three. 
He's played pretty well as, as well. Six TFLs. That would be his seventh. Oh, this one's tipped. Davenport catches it himself. I'll, uh, Marcus Mariota in the playoffs a few years ago when Mariota was with the Titans. Knock it down, Davenport. <laughs> Knock it down. The one thing you can't do is get it back and throw it again. Great job by Gavin Meyer getting the mid up and knocking it down. Third and 12, and this drive could be over before it even started. Nick McGriff out here. From their own 19, that's Nana Davis. It was in motion, looking deep as Davenport along the left sideline. And good coverage there by Ja'Cory Hawkins. It was Justin McGriff who was unable to come down with it. We do have a flag down. Got some big guys on the edges between Brian Cobbs and Justin McGriff. They just haven't been able to get it to them. All sides, number 93, defense in the neutral zone with the snap. Five-yard penalty, replay, third down. That's Devon Harris, 33 seconds to go here in the half. And it's going to be third and seven. The young freshman Bishop Davenport making his first career start. Utah State, the only FBS school that started four quarterbacks or played four quarterbacks this year because of injury. Again, over the head of Brian Cobbs. And that will bring up fourth down. Looked like he had some space on the edge to get it to Cobbs. You'll see Davenport's reaction here, knowing he had him open. Maybe a miscommunication there on the route. Yeah, he looked a little confused, but then again, this is the first week. He's constantly is on to punt. Fair catch call for and Whelan content to let that one bounce. This is the first week that Davenport has actually been able to practice in season with the starters. Hasn't taken an actual practice rep in team drills the entire year until this week. And coaches will tell you sometimes that's good and, and sometimes that's bad. You know, sometimes you just want a guy raw off the bench and let him go play when you have to think about it all week. It's a little bit different, but I've been impressed with Bishop Davenport. This is a tough situation. Did not expect to play at all this year. He's their fourth quarterback, and he's out there running the offense with some poise and confidence, just not consistent enough delivering the ball accurately on the edges. 19 seconds to go in the half. Easily throws. That one complete and out of bounds is where Joshua Cobbs goes after he picks up the first down. So. Well done there with 14 seconds to go. A couple of timeouts, and it looks like uh, Coach Polisek is going to use this opportunity to run a two-minute drill with his quarterback and try to get a field goal or at least get a little bit of experience in this two-minute drill. Well, you need a couple of chunk plays here. Beasley with a clean pocket. Has a man. It's Wheeland. And they are in field goal position after a 40-yard gain by Wyatt Whelan. All of a sudden, Wyoming spreads them out, and they look like the Oklahoma State Cowboys and not the Wyoming Cowboys. Peasley, plenty of time in the pocket, delivers that ball perfectly to Whelan, making up for that muff punt. Second long play that Whelan's had catching the ball for Peasley. Just one catch for 14 yards for Wyatt Whelan in their last game tonight. Two for 61. But you're right, certainly feeling a lot better now than he was after that muff, muff punt. Putting Wyoming in position. With the ball on the 22-yard line and seven seconds to go, one timeout left. Time to take a shot to the end zone here. Petros, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think they'll take a shot uh, at least to the uh, sideline and then try to get the, the field goal unit out there. 
but it's a one-shot deal. You know, they do have the timeout, so they could really take any kind of shot they want and call a timeout, as long as it takes less than seven seconds. Swenna running back, four receivers set for Peasley. Pressure coming from Utah State, lets it go. And that falls incomplete. The field goal unit will come on. He was looking for Cobbs. Yeah, they like Cobbs right off the bat versus Michael Anyanwu. The play did not take too much time. Good play call, nice try. You live to fight for this field goal. 43 yard attempt for John Hoyland, who has been so good this year. And he converts once again. So Wyoming will go into the locker room with a 10 point lead at halftime after the John Hoyland field goal. Hoyland now 16 of 17 on the year, but the story of the game Titus Swen. Almost 100 yards in the first half. Wyoming in control here in Laramie. Breaking down.